chapter 17 verse 1 And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Peter is found in verse 1, along with James and John. As I've said repeatedly, I believe that Peter and especially John were the weakest of the apostles. Peter goes to decapitate the man who was going to take the Lord, but misses the neck and ends up cutting off his ear and then Christ heals the ear and yet the man doesn't believe on him. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Once again showing you that miracles don't always bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. But here Peter, John and James are privileged to see the Lord come down to be transfigured before them. 1628 told us that some would be standing here, i.e. with the Lord, which wouldn't taste of death till they saw the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And as I've already said, there's two ways of looking at that. The first way to look at that would be the apostles seeing him, which I am looking at now. And also the second way to look at that would be Matthew 24, when he comes back to the earth with the church to scoop up the tribulation saints and take them up to Jerusalem. 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. 4. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. This again shows on the one hand Peter wanting to do what was right, and yet on the other hand totally failing to understand that Christ is in a league of his own. To build three tabernacles to some extent meant that he was on a similar par to Moses and Elijah. Hence why the Lord once again has to take him aside and give him some extra schooling. 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. Luke's account says that the cloud came over them and they entered into the cloud. They were terrified, that is completely to be expected. And also from 5, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. Found very much from the third chapter when John publicly proclaims to the people that Christ the Messiah has arrived here. God the Father is speaking from heaven and those that are present, Peter, James and John, are going to witness it. And only they would witness it. When Paul goes on the road to Damascus, he's knocked off his horse and God speaks to Paul from heaven. Paul hears what the Lord is saying and understands, whereas those standing with Paul hear a voice of some kind coming from heaven but can't quite make out what is being said. Paul was given a special revelation in Acts 9. Here Peter, James and John are also given a special revelation for their ears only. 7. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes they saw no man save Jesus only. There is one God and one mediator between men and God, the man, Christ Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other name. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
if you are saved your main focus should be on the Son of God not the Holy Spirit not even God the Father but on the Son of God he died for your sins you trust in him to save you all the glory goes to him I spoke to a communist on the street just a couple of days ago who had just returned from Cuba and he said to me why did God make the earth and I said to him well according to Revelation 4 he made it for his son that those of us that would believe on his son would be given to him as a gift it's all for him it's all about him it's not about us when we focus on him when we look to him when we pray in his name to the Father the Holy Spirit is pleased he isn't grieved he isn't quenched we approach the triune God with equality of course but we pray to the Father in the name of the Son just a quick point I wanted to cover 9 and as they came down from the mountain Jesus charged them saying tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead they wouldn't have believed them anyway much like from 16 don't tell anybody that I am the Messiah yet my kingdom isn't yet of this world wait till the ascension and then preach what you have seen here today bit by bit otherwise you overload people and also due to the hostility due to all the problems that the Lord was experiencing with jury this could have been what was spoken about in Matthew 7 where you find people casting their pearls before swine they wouldn't have received this glorious vision not at this point in the Lord's ministry anyway 10 and his disciples asked him saying why then say the scribes that Elias must first come and Jesus answered and said unto them Elias truly shall come first and restore all things but I say unto you that Elias is come already and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them I believe that Elijah will be one of the two witnesses found in Revelation and of course by 13 we are told that he is thinking and referring to John the Baptist then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist John came in the spirit of Elijah he wasn't Elijah he wasn't a reincarnation of Elijah John understood that his ministry mirrored that of Elijah very much down to the letter but he wasn't Elijah he simply came in the spirit and had the same appearance also as Elijah 14 and when they were come to the multitude there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying Lord have mercy on my son for he is lunatic and sore vexed for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water and I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him then Jesus answered and said O faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you bring him hither to me the Apostles should have been able to cast out this unclean spirit we found from chapter 10's accounts that they had a pretty successful outreach and healing ministry but here they couldn't cure this man's son so he did the right thing he went to the top man he took it upstairs if you ever get into a situation where you are unable to go any further you can't make heads or tails of scripture or your own life if you're struggling if you are just sinking really if you are failing to stay afloat take it upstairs just get on your knees and say Jesus I can't continue on I need you to come beside me and restore me you said in chapter 11 that if I was heavy laden I could come to you and I'm heavy laden and I need to come to you now 
and the word of God says that he wouldn't cast out those that came to him. But here, this man is desperate and he's going to the Son of God to have his son healed. 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Interesting, it is speaking here of the devil, not a devil. And all I can ascertain from that, when I look at verse 14, was that this certain man could have been a leader, could have been a ruler, could have been somebody in authority, hence why the devil himself is possessing this child. 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? That's a good question, and yet the back end of 18 says he was cured from that very hour, straight away. No delay, and I know I said this over the years, and I'll just say it again very briefly, that I went to a sanctuary when I first became a Bible believer, and this sanctuary was run by two women that believed that the apostolic sign gifts were still for today, and they had people staying there for two, three, four, five months, paying weekly, I should say, to stay there, and these people weren't healed from that very hour. These people weren't healed straight away. They stayed for week after week, month after month. But uh, my Bible tells me that those that came to the Lord and to the apostles were healed straight away. But uh, the focus now goes back to the apostles from 19. Why couldn't we cast him out? It's a good question. Look at 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. The preparation wasn't sufficient, and they lack the faith in the Holy Spirit to deliver this child from the devil. As I've said time after time, it's imperative that we get the dispensations down in the right place. This is a Jewish gospel written by a Jew to the Jews. The Jews are living under the law. The Messiah has come to earth. The devil's activity has quadrupled even beyond that to levels previously never seen. People are possessed left, right and center. He dies, he goes back to glory. The first dozen or so chapters of Acts of the Apostles, covering a period of about 10 to 15 years roughly, still shows us that people were being delivered of unclean spirits. The middle to the latter end of Acts of the Apostles, we don't read so much about people being exercised of unclean spirits. By the time we get to the Epistles, written 50, 55, 60 AD, roughly, there's no mention about what to do if somebody is possessed with an unclean spirit. The Lord has come, he's been victorious, and he's gone back to glory. That doesn't mean that people aren't still possessed today. They are, of course, but due to the epistles not giving us any clear indication as how best to deliver somebody who may be possessed, we take that to be that we will simply approach this from verse 21. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. You can pray and fast for somebody who may be possessed, who may be oppressed, and then you try to witness that person, you try to get that person to confess Christ as Lord. But here, again, this is, I would say, aimed primarily 
at the people of Israel under the law, pre the crucifixion. 22. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. Of course, of course they were. They had lived with the Lord. They had become very close to him. They didn't want to think of him being publicly humiliated, dragged through the streets like a common criminal, and nailed to a pagan Roman cross naked. They couldn't fathom that. It was absolutely abhorrent to them. Paul said that a crucified Messiah was foolishness to them. It was something they just couldn't handle. But once again, the Lord has to keep reminding the apostles that he is coming to the end of his time on earth. They have to be prepared for his soon crucifixion. 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He saith, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute, of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers? Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take that, and give unto them, for me and thee. This is a neglected miracle. Peter was a fisherman all of his life. He was going to become a fisher of men, but here he was told to go out, cast his net, and the first fish that came up would have money. Take the money and give to those that were collecting taxes. All powers to be are ordained of God, and the saved man or woman should submit to the authority. But if the authority says that they should do something which is contrary to scripture, then you go with the scripture and you discard what the powers to be say. But by and large, you are to live a peaceful and quiet life. And here, this account has Peter being humble enough to go out to sea, look for a fish out of millions of fish, or thousands of fish perhaps, and that fish that came up would have money. You need to have faith as a child to be saved and to understand the things of God. Here, Peter, as a professional fisherman, as a lower middle class businessman, had just that. He had the faith, he had the humility to go out and do what the Lord asked him to do.